I'm here with a lovely Sharon of Within Temptation to talk about the new record, Bleed Out, out right now, everywhere that you can stream, everywhere that you can buy. First of all, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me about this new record. How's things going with you? Very fine. Thank you. Really happy that uh, the album's finally really released now, although there were some songs already out there, of course, but uh, yeah, enjoying the reviews. So, so let's talk a little bit about that. It, it's a different way of putting a record together, different, definitely a different way of presenting a new album to the fans, like you said, with uh, a lot of the songs already being out. Uh, did you enjoy this process? Uh, I know it was was a different process for you. Is it something that maybe works out really well and you guys will do it again in the future? It worked out really well this time, uh, but that was also because of the fact there was a pandemic uh, actually, which took longer than we thought. Um, in the beginning, we were like, okay, the new songs that we have writ written actually for the new tour, let's release them during COVID to keep ourselves busy and also for the fans to have something to look forward to. But then it, it took so long for the pandemic to pass that we released way more than we actually wanted to actually. And um, the of course we wanted to release more in the moment. That's the reason that we became independent with this release for the first time. And that made us very flexible, but um, yeah, it was, um, it did also, well, we gave a little bit, maybe too much already ahead before the album came out. But, like I said, it was for a good purpose. So I'm I'm really happy that we were flexible and to make this decision ourselves instead of having to fight with a record company about how many releases we were, we were going to do. And I must say it did work in our advantage because we had a lot of coverage over the three years that we have been releasing, which we normally don't have with a traditional way of uh, releasing because then you have like a few songs before the album and you have like more or less two weeks that you get complete coverage by media. And then everybody doesn't talk about you anymore unless you play somewhere. And so this way we were able to have like uh, best of both worlds, actually. You guys never shy away from talking about emotional issues, social issues, political issues. Uh, is it becoming more and more difficult to separate yourself, the artist, from the world around you and how that world inspires you? Um. Uh, well, separate is very difficult because we are inspired by the world and it is because it, it um, it's like the things that happen do leave an impression on you. And for us, music is a way of therapy that we, I think you hear from many people actually, that, that music is therapy for a lot of people. Some go do sports, we do music. <laughs> I do sports as well, but I, you know, I better to, to deal with my emotions and everything happening in the world. It It's way easier for me to do it with music and um so for us it's it's we are inspired by the world we, we we are storytellers and this is what we do and i think it was more important than ever to talk about things that we feel are relevant not that we can change the world but more like yeah like i said to deal with the world but also to keep the subject alive a lot of times like the war in the ukraine for instance or what's happening in iran um you know you have people talking about it like a few weeks people know it's still going on but nobody talks about it. nobody's shocked or nobody's well, they, they lose interest, which is lo logical because everybody has their own life to lead, of course. But to imagine there's only two and a half hour flight from here is like there's Kiev, which is so close by. And um, and this whole war um, does make our make Europe very fragile because you see a lot of countries who are thinking more and more pro-Russian. So to talk about this with people which we know of in certain countries, our elections now, like in my own country, uh, the next few months are going to be election time. And there has been an election in in, in Poland, in Hungary recently, uh, and in Italy, of course. And you see a lot of things changing and not all for the best. So it's, uh, it's good to talk about these things also as a band, in my opinion, especially because we are inspired by the world. And more than ever, I think the momentum is there as we have all become more outspoken on social media even you know society itself so why can't we as a band talk about these things that matter so much and i think we should have this discussion about what kind of world do you want to live in and not you know i'm not telling anyone how to think or what to do more like to have discussion is because that we are living in democracies where we're allowed to do this instead of countries where they're not even where they want to would love to but they aren't allowed to so like russia or iran for instance 
do you find that while that discussion is important and and it's part of like you said of a, a of a democracy do you find that some fans don't want to have that discussion they 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 almost want their bands to be completely cyborgs and and just not have any feelings any emotions specifically if those emotions and feelings go against their own views yeah I think that, of course, because then you have to do effort to understand another person, which is going to cost you energy <laughs> and empathy and a lot of things that you need to do to understand another person, which I think is the most interesting because I love to have a talk with people who think differently and listen to why they are saying that. Because from that way, I learn again also. And I, you know, maybe I can understand why they are thinking like that. And maybe because of the conversation, I can convince them also of my view and, and even to agree to disagree at a certain point, if you really don't get any step further, but to have respect for each other and, and each other's view. And I think, find it difficult when pe people say like, you should shut up and just make music. You know, <laughs> that's not who, what artists are. You know, artists have always been in, in Bob Delk or um, Bob Delk or, uh, you know, <laughs> um, you know, Bob Dylan, for instance, you know, he was inspired by 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 it in the 60s and the 70s. He was writing songs about freedom and, you know, so many other artists. It's it's like um, you too, you know, all kinds of amazing bands. And I'm a, I'm just I, I would love to see more people actually speak out a little bit and just just uh, to keep the discussion going on. It doesn't matter if you have a different view, but, you know, do it with respect and listen to each other. I, I think uh, some people have are afraid of uh, rocking the boat and and hurting their financial bottom line, and I think that has then an impact on their on their creativity because technically what they're doing then is they're censoring themselves instead of you know uh, complaining about somebody else trying to censor them. And I think a lot yeah. of that is happening these days. I think you're you're right. I do agree with that. Yeah. So moving to a more pleasant topic, let's talk about the, the the record itself, the design, the structure. Was it difficult for you guys to create a track listing considering how many songs were already out, but you still wanted to create a dynamic experience for the listener? Was was this a challenging process? Uh, it was, in the beginning, we were not sure because we were, everything was uh, recorded fragmented. Like we had three songs in in a patch that we did, like, okay, three songs now and then, we had some break, touring and everything. And then we had another uh, a few weeks that we were another uh, uh, writing again and recording and mixing. And that's how we did it throughout the three years, which was quite uh, exhausting in a way, because when you go into a, in write modus or recording and everything, it really takes a lot from you. You know, it takes so much focus and so much uh dedication time everything and uh to do it every time was a bit intense also but and we were afraid that in the end the songs would not match because we, we did it in a different time frame every time over the three years we recorded and released and the album was not even finished so in the moment we were writing again and making new stuff again so but i was really happy to see and find out eventually that everything did fit in a certain order if you would hustle them a little bit through uh, you know um, and then, um, but if it would not have worked, we would have done things differently, like maybe different mix or maybe, um, yeah, go back uh, in songwriting, maybe change some certain things. But in the end, it actually did work too. So we were actually happy that we didn't have to change anything because it saved us a lot of time if, if that would have been the case. And I felt like this album uh, sonically had uh, heavy, a lot of heaviness to it. Uh, it, it consistently from from start to finish the, this that heaviness become almost the result of the attitude that some of these songs have yes i think so um it, it, it has to do with with the, the time we are in i think that, that makes us more like just want to you know just want to just let it go the, the, the frustration and the and everything that is uh, making such a huge impact on you as a person uh, what, what you're worried about and I think so lyrically musically everything comes together in the music and yeah even though it's more outspoken than ever I really enjoy it because I feel really freed from all the things that that made such an impression and I'm not carrying it with me anymore it's like because it's on the album now it's like okay I've parked it there of course things will come new things will come but but in the I've that is what I've parked and what else comes on our way. We'll deal with that in the time that it comes and we'll write again. Uh, vocally for you, uh, did this approach 
help you having the ability to kind of concentrating on separate songs at separate time? Uh, did, did that added a, a little bit more energy? Did that give you a, a different take on on how to perform these songs? Uh, yes, most definitely. And but also besides that, that I had time to think of what kind of thing would I like to try on the next song? You know, with Bleed Out, for instance, the, the song Bleed Out, I really wanted to have more of a um, almost, you know, clenet or angelic or kind of um, um, yeah, Enya kind of way of approach of singing, which is totally not metal. But then the next moment when it was heavy, sing full full force again and then with a different voicing and to play around with that, that is... That was really nice to be able to do for once. And because there was so much time in between, I really had time to think about what I wanted to try. And I would love to explore that more because that was really, this is one of my favorite songs actually, because there's more diversity and more, more, um, uh, you know, um, like the, the big things and go to small, like the more, how do you call that? Um, diversity within the song. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you to to rank this record. I know all the fans are always like, oh, is this one better than that one? You, you know how fans are. There's always this competition for which one is the best record. Yeah. But I want to <laughs> ask you vocally, where do you rank this album? Was it more challenging than previous records? Was it more difficult than the previous records? Do you like this performance more than previous records? Where, where, do, you, where do you put this album vocally? I like this vocally more than ever because I've tried more different things. And it's, I think it's very... The, it's very diverse uh, vocally from from my perspective what i've done before of course i've done certain things that are coming back on this album as well like this kate bush kind of sound that we had like on um, the dance for instance uh, it's coming back now a little bit with wireless but in a different way again and uh with bleed out like i said i tried things that inspired me that of bands that i used to listen to when i was growing up and i still love and uh so trying new things that i think i can do also um, it's fun to do new things and um, I'm but I also I think it already already started with resist and I think in back in the days when we started we did more diverse things like we are doing now again maybe because we felt like there was uh, at that time we were really trying to to find our identity with the first two albums I guess and with these this last one I I'm figure I think we're figuring out again our identity more and more so because I think if you listen to the first and the last, we couldn't be further apart from each other almost. But that's what I love. I think it's it's nice that it's possible and that people are still growing with us and accompanying us on our journey to find new stuff that are that we find is inspiring. And I'm really happy to see that so many people traveled throughout the years with us. Of course, there are also people that left that didn't understand the, the changes we made. But for me, it's essential to keep on going to do new new things. Is the identity of the band completely tied to your own, not just yours, but the band's own growth as individuals and as musicians? Because it's you're not the same person that you were uh, even three records ago. I mean, it's impossible. We all change as people. So uh, do, do you see the two things completely correlated with one another? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think the experience made it able for us to make this album. And I think um, as a person, I think, in the past, we were a bit afraid to, to be more open about what the topics were about. We, you know, it was about um, history like the Second World War or William Wallace, uh, so freedom fighters, but not about current things. Of course, we had, of course, a lot of metaphors there that was actually about things also happening at that time. So we could talk a little bit about it, but not as openly as we do now on stage, actually with waving a Ukrainian flag or talking in interviews about what our views is um, views are about the the, the, you know, the political things that are happening and um, the wars that are going on at this moment, actually, and which feels so much more free than actually shutting up about it. I think it gives me um, uh, it's nice to talk about it and to 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 find how other people think about this and of course it gets a lot of backlash as well because there's a lot of people that don't like this growth as uh, for, of us as as uh, how we grew throughout the years as persons i guess to be more outspoken but i think uh, this is this is the end result of what we have become after so many years doing this that we feel more comfortable in doing it is also is also is that also a result of of the, of the success of the band because the success allows you to have a different platform 
It allows you to have a much larger platform and maybe be able to take some of those hits when they come your way. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 it does give you more space to be, if, if we would not have been as successful as we have been, um, I don't know if I'm not, I'm not sure if we would have made the same choices because I think because of success you feel like empowered also to do things in a, in a different way or to embrace new things and that's when things are really like when things I don't know yeah I can't say of course in in a different situation situation how we would have reacted to that because we're not at that in that time of you know it didn't happen to us but it did happen that we became more successful over the years so i'm happy for that and that we were able to feel empowered enough to do the things that we are doing nowadays and do these changes and speak out so who who puts more pressure uh on within temptation the fans or you guys uh in what way do you mean <laughs> in, in terms of, of creativity in terms of the music that you want to do, but also the music that people want to listen to? Um, I think both. I think we, we ch within the band, we're challenging each other, like to, to take it a notch up. And I think for the fans as well, because people never want to change. They don't they'll like change. They want to keep everything the same. <laughs> and with every album we have not done, done so. So I think we've always challenged also our, our audience to, 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 uh, well, take this journey with us, and like I said, some didn't, and but a lot of them did, which I'm really happy because because we did a lot of crazy stuff in the meantime, and try it. You know, the most of our people thought like, oh my, God, why? Like the duet with the exhibit, which I think is one of my top uh, five th songs that we have that I love very much. But a lot of people said like, you're crazy. This is never gonna work, and. And then eventually, well, the nicest thing is what like one interviewer said to me from Germany. He said, like, I really hate this song. That was the first thing he said to me. How could you do this? And then two months later, I spoke with him again. He said, I have to make a confession to make. And I was like, oh, my God, he's going to give it to me again with something else. And he said, I, I wanted to be honest with you because the song that I hated two months ago is actually now my favorite song. And we've been playing it in the office nonstop. And he kept on praising it. I was like... Oh wow, this can happen as well. And I was, you know, I felt it was cool that he told me that he was upfront about it. Like, okay, I really hate it, and I really love it. It's like the contrast couldn't be bigger. And yeah, that really made me feel good. And I felt like, okay, maybe that happens sometimes as well that people really think I don't want to like this, and then <laughs> eventually do like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one last question for you. I, I gotta mention uh, the last time you played in Toronto. I'm in Toronto. Uh, you guys had a great show here. I have a little small story to add to that, which is I took my son, young son at the time. He's a ad young adult now. And uh, In Flames was opening for you guys. And I remember him telling me before the show, Daddy, you got to buy me an In Flames t-shirt. At the end of the show, he's like, you know what? I'm going to buy a Within Temptation t-shirt. The, the show was <laughs> phenomenal. He completely forgot about In Flames. And he went to the merch and he, he made me buy a, a t-shirt for him. When, when you hear stories like that, of fans coming to a show, maybe not necessarily being diehard Within Temptation show uh, fans, but after the performance, leaving with a smile, leaving completely fulfilled, forcing their parents to buy some merch. <laughs> <laughs> How does that make you feel? No, I couldn't be prouder because that's what we try to do. Sometimes, you know, like In Flames is a seriously cool band, of course. And, um, and you know, we also felt like they were not like a support act, in my opinion. They were very equal to us. And uh, we would we loved being on tour with them. But, you know, sometimes you're the underdog uh, because, like, like you said, you came for In Flames, but you left with a vintage shirt. Uh, then then you feel like okay we did something good because we changed we also got you know we um we we changed someone's mind about us as a band and uh we won love you know that's how we see it we win hearts <laughs> metal hearts of course but yeah but it's cool it's cool that, that happens that you can surprise people and and they actually go back home with a smile. That's the most beautiful thing you can achieve, of course. I think well. that's the most important thing. And, and I just want to finish this conversation by saying, please do not take so long to come back to Toronto. <laughs> uh, the city loves you. The fans love you. Uh, do not take a big hiatus. Come back as soon as possible. I'll buy another yeah, shirt. I'll buy another yeah, shirt. <laughs> and the problem for us a bit is that, um, that Canada and America is so big. That the traveling is so long and the distances and 
you know, although we do really well, it's it's still like it doesn't feel like um, we're making big steps there like we are in other places. So for us, it's always like um, we would love to come because especially Canada, we have do have the feeling that we get a lot of feedback from back because it's a little bit more European in a way. So I guess uh, for also in the past, it was easier for you to understand our, our type of music in a way. And America was a little bit more difficult in the beginning, but nowadays a bit easier as well. But um, so it's it's uh, that's the only reason why we're not coming over as frequently as we would like to come over because it, the, the traveling is such a different thing in in uh, North America than than it is in uh, than in Europe, for instance. Well, Sharon, thank you very much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. This made my day. Oh. So thank, thank you. you very much for having me, but I really hope you'll return to to uh, to Canada as soon as possible because we do love you guys and thank you for having me on the show. And, and we love you. So hope to see you soon. Take care. All the best. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>